Uh, I wanted to show off. Just got a new knife today. And uh, it's something that I've wanted for a long time. If you don't know about the uh, Corel Family Freak Show, they make the best, best quality hanks out there. The best quality beads too. And they're also doing knives now. This is a uh, Beetlejuice themed bead. So they're dope. Uh, anyway, so I just got today a couple. Well, one thing. I got one thing today. What the hell's going on? Hold on a second. All right. I just noticed that the gate was open. I don't know how that happened. So anyway, I got something today that I've wanted for forever. And um, I went and got it today, even though I shouldn't have. So I got the, the Benchmade 87. And I wanted to make a video comparing it with the 67. And uh, just showing it off. And first... I got a I got a package in the mail. I have no idea what's in here. So you ever get packages in the mail that you're like, I don't remember ordering this. I don't even know who it's from. Oh, this is my McNeese box. Nice. That came freaking quick, dude. So use my McNeese to open a box from McNeese. How about that? So I got Two of these little books, these little notebooks. Uh, one of these is going to be for me. Another one's going to be for uh, the dude who won the contest for the uh, cover photo, VMO. So they even sent me a little personalized. Hey Jeff, thank you for your support. Have a great day. That's crazy, man. That's super cool. So, uh, I got these books. And... Also got me a... A little work mat. Or a little... It's like a mouse pad, basically, is what it looks like. So, that's pretty cool. I might keep it this... I, I might keep it. I might give it away. I don't know. We shall see. Seems like a big box for just these two little things. But cool. Now that's out of the way. Let's get into it. This here is the 67. This has been long since discontinued. They haven't made these in forever. I like this one so much because of the blade shape. I think that is an absolutely awesome blade shape that they did on this one, this Tonto. Uh, they do the crown spine on this one. A crown spine just means it's like a rounded... Uh, I'll show you a close-up. So you can see it's kind of rounded... Uh, knives that have that, Chris Reeve knives have that, uh, Giant Mouse does it as well. I think that's super cool when you, when you have a crown spine, it's just really nice. Just a little extra detail. So this one here is, uh, straight aluminum, sandwich style, meaning that it's four pieces of metal screwed together. We've got a latch that's just kind of loosey-goosey. Um, like I said, it's aluminum. So this thing is very heavy. Um, if you're not used to flipping, uh, the heaviness is going to... You know, it's something that you kind of got to get used to. So, there's that one. Um, I did... I brought this to work one day and I was trying to show off. And I ended up trying to do a, a rollover on my, my hand and it freaking, I ended up throwing it at my hand and it sliced it straight open, dude. 
And that was at work. And uh, I work at a hospital, so I just went over to the ER, and uh, they just treated me like everybody else, and I was going to have to wait like four hours or so, so I said, screw that. Uh, they just wrapped it up. I just wrapped it up and went back to work, and because I did that, now I have a huge, nasty scar, but uh, this thing is D2 steel. Um, used to, D D2 was like the main steel everybody used. Uh, you don't see D2 so much anymore. Uh, the Benchmade Ballast Songs actually say Ballast Song on them. Kind of hard to see. There you go. Ballast Song. Benchmade USA. Um, so, one thing I've always loved about Benchmade is when you're paying for a Benchmade, you're going to be spending a lot of money. But with Benchmade, I know from personal experience, if you have any issues at all, you can send it to Benchmade. And they will fix you right up. I had bought a Crooked River brand new. And I used to be in the habit of when I was driving, I would just play with my knife, whatever, and just sit it in my lap. I'm sure everybody has done that plenty of times. You go to get out of the car, the knife falls to the ground. And uh, when I got home, I got out of the car and my brand new Crooked River that I just spent, God, I don't even remember, like $300 or something crazy. Fell to the ground, and uh, the Crooked River has, like, wooden inlay overlays or whatever. And it's called Diamond Wood, and it just chipped it. And I was so sad. <laughs> but I hit up Benchmade, and I sent it in, and in three weeks' time, I had my Crooked River back, and it was like new. They literally put a whole new overlay on it. I mean, it was brand spanking new. And I ended up returning it to the store that I bought it from because it was just a little too big for my liking. The Benchmade Crooked River is freaking huge, dude. Uh, the Mini Crooked River is about the perfect size. I've had a Mini Crooked River too. Those things are pretty dope. So... Uh, Benchmade, if you're like, man, I don't want to spend all that money on a Benchmade, just know that it's literally a lifetime warranty. Anything, I mean, most knife companies have a warranty of some kind, but it's going to be to cover manufacturer's defect. And so, if you drop it on the ground, that's not a manufacturer's defect. So, the fact that they fixed it up, uh, no questions asked, that was, that was really cool. So, I will always... Praise Benchmade and their customer service. So, okay. So here we have the 67, and this one here is the 87. So this one here is full titanium integral. Integral just means that's one big chunk of metal. They mill it out and... Uh, it's a big, thick slab of titanium. So, the weight difference on these, this one weighs significantly more than this one. Even though um, the 87 is significantly bigger. Still weighs a lot less. You can buy uh, flytanium. Flytanium sells titanium scales or handles for the 60s so they got the 62 the 67 they may have others but you can buy the titanium handles if you would like I've always wanted the titanium handles but I've just never bought them 
the uh, only place I've seen them is uh, eBay. It's about 200 bucks. You can upgrade this to titanium. So, let's move on to the 87. So, the 87 is long discontinued. They haven't made this thing in a few years. I'm not sure when they stopped making it, but they don't make it anymore. Um, I love the blade shape on this. Kind of like a, a reverse Tonto, I guess I would call it. Um, the spine is, I would say it's crowned, but it's not, a, it's not as rounded as the other. But it's still got that crowned spine on it. Which is dope. This thing's going to be a great cutter. I love a Warncliffe style blade. It's real easy to cut open boxes and stuff like that. As opposed to like a, a rounded like a drop point. So. Um, I always love that style of blade. Um, and also some of the other differences would be... 67 has, you can just see the setup. I am not Balasong fluent in the language. But this one here, we've got four screws. Um, this one here has got like a stop pin on both sides. This one does not. So just a little bit different. You can see the differences there. Um, they also have a model. The only model that Benchmade still does in the Balasong. I mean, Benchmade has made a lot of Balasongs. Um, I actually think that... So first off, Benchmade started out making Balasongs. And then they moved on to doing other stuff too. But I think that's why their logo is a butterfly. Because they made butterfly knives. So that's just my theory. Uh, the butterfly probably comes from butterfly knife. I don't know. So. And also. I mentioned the. Uh, latch is kind of loosey goosey on this one. Um, so when you open it. Whatever. So this one here. This latch here has a spring in it. So it just. So it's a little different. That is definitely an upgrade. Um, some people like it. Some people don't. Um. At the place where I bought this, I get I get these from a local store. There's a local shop uh, in Dallas that I get my knives from. When I want to go buy a knife and put, you know, hold it and feel it and whatever else, I'll go to uh, my little spot. It's called the Army Store. And um, the guy, one of the guys that worked there, he's really into the ballast songs. And he's got... Quite a few nice ballast songs. He's got this one here. He was telling me today that he almost bought this one. But he didn't. Because ultimately he didn't like the latch. So. I don't understand that. I mean I think the latch is fine. But. Um, this one here is super dope. I'm going to show you. Uh, the sound. Oh shit. You got to be careful not to hold the bite handle. Any bell song, if it's got a latch on it, that's going to be the bite handle. Do not hold it from this end unless you want to get cut. Or unless you're doing something, some sort of trick to where you're going to be like flinging it around. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to drop it or cut myself. But like one, one trick I'll do, I'll fling it like this over my thumb. And, I, and then I end up grabbing the other handle. So if you're ever doing a trick where you end up holding the other handle, then you'll want to grab the bite handle. But this one is so dope, it sings. It almost sounds like a winter blade factor. So if you're good at flipping, 
like I am not. I mean, just look up videos of the uh, Benchmade 85 or the Benchmade 87. People flipping it. It just ding, 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 ding. It's because that titanium is just really freaking cool, man. This thing is just so dope. Um, so Benchmade is only doing... Um, Benchmade only makes one ballast song anymore. And it is the 85. The Benchmade 85. Um, you can buy them. They're about $675. Which, ah, shit, I just did it again. Uh, so, the Benchmade 87, the Benchmade 85 uh, is going to be this exact knife with a different blade. Uh, and also, this one here is D2. Benchmade used to use D2 a lot. That's how old this knife is. It is a D2 blade. Now they're using S30, uh, which is a much better steel. So the Benchmade 85 and the Benchmade 87 are using S30. So literally, uh, this thing here, I spent 500 on it, which really is a good price. Uh, on Blade HQ, back when they stopped selling them, because they're discontinued, they were charging about 550. So I got it for 500. Uh, the Benchmade 85, they're selling for 600, um, which is a good good price, you know, considering. Um, the uh, the machining on these knives is absolutely impeccable. I mean, what's required to to make that is just beyond my ability to even understand, but I know that integrals are very uh, pricey. They're very hard to make. And with a, uh, like a integral folder, they're going to be difficult, or let me, let me rephrase that. They're going to be more difficult to, uh, work on and stuff because, uh, I do have an integral. It's my Brian tie, but that's a button lock. Uh, a good example of an integral titanium knife would be the Microtech um, Annex, made by Reich. I've had one of those. Those are really freaking nice. But, yep. Uh, yeah, I guess that's really all I have to say, man. I've gone on for about 20 minutes now. I'll try to shorten it up, but... Just wanted to show those off. Uh, I also really, I, I really like this case that they have for the 87. Um, it did come with like some Velcro. I guess you can put Velcro through all this crap and then somehow can attach it to your belt or something. Um, the case for the 67, it's just this little pouch. That you can put on your belt. This one here. It seems too small. I mean even the little uh, bench made little nylon pouches or whatever. It came with one of those as well. But this thing doesn't even fit in it. Like it comes up to about there. Um, so yeah. That's really all I got. This is a cool knife. Uh, one thing that I kind of take pride in. Some of my nicest knives. Um, I am the first owner of. It's one thing to have a nice knife. But most of the time when you get a really nice knife. It is aftermarket. Or in a, it's in a trade. Something like that. So to have, a, have something on this level. Uh, and I'm the first owner. That's pretty, you know, pretty awesome. I take pride in that. Uh, I did want to show too. Uh, this blade here, it's got a little, uh, not a nick in the blade, but there is a little, almost like a burr. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, 
I'm able to rub it across my fingernail and it's just scratching because there's a little lip on the blade. I don't know if it's from the factory like that. I don't know if somebody in the store was messing around and it, it fell. I have no idea. But uh, I was going to show you that's really easy to fix. Uh, I've got this little uh, work sharp sharpener. It's a diamond stone sharpener. I like how it's got the uh, angles on it. And I really don't use this thing. I don't use this thing ever uh, because it's just not necessary. And this diamond stone thing, I'm not real good at sharpening, but the knives I have used with it, it doesn't, the blade does not look good afterwards. But this area here is really fine and I use this, this side all the time. And so I'm going to use that to going to line it up on the edge and I'm just going to just run it a few times it's already much better yep I think I fixed it that lip is no longer there that's all it takes. It doesn't take a lot. So these things, uh, there's other people that make these. Um, I use this thing all the time. Uh, anytime my knife gets a little bit dull, you're good to go. This thing's a straight laser beam. All right, guys, uh, that's about all I got. One of these days, I'll make a video on my Brian tie. Um, I've also got an Arius on the way. I was able to get an Arius straight from Koenig. So I'm going to be the first owner of an Arius. Uh, I've had an Arius in the past, and it was the nicest knife. It was the nicest frame lock I've ever handled. Minus, uh, I had handled a Grimsmo Norseman at uh, Blade Show. That was a really, really nice knife that I was very impressed with. But uh, Koenig Arius, <sighs> so nice, so freaking nice. I would say that the Koenig Arius is frame lock perfection. Uh, here's a fun fact too. Uh, Koenig, the people that run Koenig, Bill Koenig and, and whoever else, they actually, uh, they were trained under Chris Reeve. They used to work uh, making Chris Reeve knives. And then eventually they branched out and, and started making Koenig. So Koenig definitely, uh, they know what they're doing. Uh, there's a reason that Koenigs are probably the most... Uh, Highest priced knives on the secondary. I mean, Koenig knives, I mean, used to, they used to sell for around 600, 650 bucks from Koenig, and then they would sell on the aftermarket for a thousand, twelve hundred. I mean, go to Arizona Customs and look up Koenig Arius, and they, uh, I doubt you'll find one under a thousand dollars. And that's just because, for one, they're made in small batches. They're made in, in America. They're made in Idaho. And they make several. I don't know how many. They'll make some, and then they'll sell them. Uh, just recently, this past Friday, I think. Not Friday. I think it was Thursday. Thursday, they had a drop 
they had two different styles. They had the style with the milled pattern. And it was a new milled pattern that I hadn't seen before. Uh, that knife was selling for like $880. Uh, after shipping and everything else, it would come out to about nine twenty. Uh, and the the plain smooth titanium uh, was like seven twenty five, something like that. It ended up costing about seven fifty five out the door. But on the secondary, those things go for much higher. Sometimes you can find them from somebody that's not trying to make a humongous profit and you can get one for about seven eight hundred dollars but if you ever have the opportunity to get a koenig man i cannot recommend them enough and same with benji he can't recommend them enough either isn't that right bud yep he wants to go on a walk so i'm gonna take him on a walk i appreciate you watching everybody and any questions or anything hit me up uh be sure to check out my group on facebook vmo it's a vouch members only group. I'm doing a waffle in the next couple of weeks. I bought a Homer's U custom titanium, uh, full titanium auto that he does. And he charges around $200 for a full handmade custom. And he's out of Japan. Um, I don't know how he's able to sell his knives for as low as he does, but Homer's U make amazing knives. Handmade custom, awesome knives. For the price, you cannot beat a Homer's U. Those things are amazing. So I wanted to do a cheaper waffle. So I got the uh, the auto. It's about two hundred dollar knife, and then I also bought one of his custom titanium beads, and that's going to be second place. Uh, it's going to be about fifteen bucks a spot, twenty spots. So it's coming from the other side of the world. So. Having to wait a couple weeks on that, but it will happen. So, be sure to check out VMO. I'm also on Instagram, Beans Blades, Beans underscore Blades. So, hope to see you there. Take it easy.